So with this video, we're going to look at a couple of the endocrine organs that are producing a great number of hormones. We're going to start out with the hypothalamus and then also talk about the pituitary gland. Both of these endocrine organs are located in the brain. So if you look at this picture over here, we've got this thing that to me always looks like a duck head. So the artist has color coded it purple. And if you think of it as a duck's head, the little beak of the duck right here is the hypothalamus. The pituitary is separated from the hypothalamus by the skinny little stalk, but it's what's represented in red right here. So those are the two endocrine organs we're gonna be focusing on with this particular folder. The hypothalamus produces a whole bunch of what are known as tropic hormones. So tropic hormones are hormones that have another endocrine gland as their target organ. And they are telling that other endocrine gland that's their target organ to either increase the amount of a particular hormone that it's producing or decrease the amount of the particular hormone um, that it's producing. So if you look at all of these tropic hormones that are produced by the hypothalamus, they all have the pituitary gland as their target organ. Some of them have releasing in their name, and that's because these are hormones that cause the pituitary to produce more of a particular hormone. Others have inhibiting in their name, and that's because they are hormones that cause the pituitary gland to decrease the amount of a particular hormone that it's producing. But tropic hormones, the hormones that are produced by the hypothalamus, are again hormones that have their effect on another endocrine organ. So the pituitary gland, as I mentioned before, sits just below the hypothalamus. It's actually attached to it by a little stalk. It's commonly been known for a long time as the master endocrine gland. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me because it is being told everything that it needs to do by the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus through the tropic hormones that it produces is telling the pituitary to increase the amount of some hormones that it's producing, to decrease the amount of other hormones that it's producing. But the pituitary gland itself does produce a lot of hormones that have effects all throughout the body. And so we refer to it as the master endocrine gland. If you look at this artist representation of it here, you'll notice that it actually has two lobes. So there's a posterior lobe that's color-coded kind of this lighter color. There's an anterior lobe that you can see here that's color-coded kind of this darker color. And the hypothalamus is able to communicate with both the anterior lobe and the posterior lobe. If you look at this lower picture down here, you'll notice that there's a pretty extensive network of blood vessels that run between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary. So those tropic hormones that are being produced by the hypothalamus get released into the blood. The blood transports them just a very short distance down here to the anterior pituitary, which is their target organ. The posterior pituitary um, is kind of different. You'll notice that there is not a blood connection, so there's no blood vessels that are running between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary. Instead, what we do have is a nervous connection. So there are neurons that have their cell bodies up in the hypothalamus. Their axons extend down through that little stalk into the posterior pituitary. And the hormones that are released by the posterior pituitary are unique in that they are secreted like neurotransmitters from these neurons that initiate from the hypothalamus. So really the hormones that are released by the posterior pituitary are hormones that are produced by cells located within the hypothalamus. And there's just a couple of hormones that are released by the posterior pituitary. Oxytocin is one, which we'll talk about again a little bit later in this video. And the other is a hormone which is known as antidiuretic hormone or ADH, which helps you to be able to concentrate the urine. So you've had an introduction to the hypothalamus and the pituitary and tropic hormones um, and some basics there that you'll have a chance to become more familiar with in the activity that you do with this folder. What I wanna do to kind of end this video is talk about how secretion of hormones is regulated. So we don't have the situation in the body where hormones 
are just being produced by their endocrine glands and they're constantly being produced and levels are constantly increasing in the body. We actually have a negative feedback system that's gonna regulate the production and secretion of most hormones in the body. So we talked about negative feedback way in the very beginning of the class and you may remember that negative feedback is going to negate change. So if something starts to ingre increase, it's going to negate that change to cause it to come back down. If something's decreasing, it's going to negate that change to bring it back up. Here's an example of how negative feedback is used in the body to regulate the secretion of most hormones. So we've been talking about the hypothalamus and the pituitary. We've got the hypothalamus here. It produces a tropic hormone, which is known as thyrotropin releasing hormone, which travels a very short distance to the anterior pituitary. When thyrotropin releasing hormone release reaches the anterior pituitary, the anterior pituitary releases its own hormone, which is known as thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone travels to the thyroid and it causes the thyroid to produce thyroid hormones. So of course, if the thyroid is producing thyroid hormones, that means that levels of thyroid hormone are going to increase in the blood. And this increasing level of thyroid hormone is gonna feed back on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary and tell them to stop producing so much thyrotropin releasing hormone and stop producing so much thyroid stimulating hormone so that the thyroid is not constantly producing high levels of the hormones. Basically, once levels of thyroid hormones become high, we've got negative feedback that's gonna shut off the production of those thyroid hormones as well. So it's gonna keep thyroid hormone within a range where it needs to be. If thyroid hormone levels are low, there's no negative feedback, which means we're gonna start producing these hormones to stimulate the thyroid to bring them back up. So negative feedback in both cases because we're negating the change. If thyroid hormones are low, we bring them back up in the blood. If thyroid hormones are high, we've got a system that shuts this down so that we're not continuing to produce them and having higher and higher levels of those hormones. So again, most hormones in the body are regulated through this negative feedback and that's gonna keep their levels from becoming too high or too low. There is one hormone, and it's one that I mentioned previously, that's a posterior pituitary hormone known as oxytocin, which is regulated through positive feedback. So this is the only hormone in the body that's regulated through positive feedback, but there's a very specific why, reason why. The primary thing that oxytocin is involved in is labor um, and childbirth. So men and women do both produce this hormone. It has some other minor functions in both men and women, but the primary thing that oxytocin does that we really think about is it helps with the childbirth process. And so I wanna walk you through how its um, release is regulated by a positive feedback. And this requires you to know a little bit about um, pregnancy and childbirth. So I'm gonna draw a ridiculously looking picture for you because I can't draw to begin with, and I also don't have good tools to draw with. Um, but what I've done here is the uterus, and the uterus is normally separated from the vagina by a structure which is known as the cervix. So here's the vagina here, and that cervix is normally squeezed shut. So it's not open through here. There's basically a block that's sitting in between the vagina and the uterus. In usually the last trimester of pregnancy, the baby, at least if everything is going normally, turns upside down. And when the baby turns upside down, typically their head is right on that cervix that's closed. And what the pressure of their head does is it pushes on the cervix and it starts to stretch it. And as it's pushing on it and it's stretching it, it starts to open it up. There are receptors in the cervix that recognize that stretch when it's happening. And when that stretch is picked up, those receptors in the cervix send a signal to the posterior pituitary and the hypothalamus, causing them to release that hormone oxytocin. When oxytocin gets into the blood, it causes contraction of the uterus. So the uterus is a hollow muscular organ that the baby's sitting in while it's developing. Here's my representation of the, of the uterus here. 
And of course, if the uterus contracts, what it's gonna do is it's gonna push in on that baby, and as it pushes in on that baby, it's gonna force the baby's head even harder against the cervix. So the head is gonna push harder against the cervix, that's gonna stretch the cervix even more. Remember, cervical stretch is the signal that tells oxytocin to be released. So oxytocin gets released, we get even harder contractions, the head pushes against the cervix even harder, that stretches it even more, and this is gonna continue in a positive feedback cycle. So the more oxytocin that's released, the more oxytocin is going to be released again because of the stretch that it's causing. This is gonna continue until we open up that cervix wide enough that the baby can actually pass through and be born. Once the baby's born, there's no more pressure from the head on the cervix and that cervical stretch is no longer there, oxytocin is no longer released, and everything goes back to where it was previously. But oxytocin in this one specific circumstance of childbirth is the only hormone that's regulated through positive feedback.